Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. In this video, I will be addressing our good friend Siffy from Siffy Talks. I've been waiting now for a good month or so for him to respond to my last video where I demonstrated that Muhammad acted of his own will against the will of Allah by prematurely, so to speak, choosing to have sex with a nine-year-old Aisha when he didn't actually have confirmation that that was permissible because Surah Al-Talaq Ayah 4 had not yet been revealed according to the standard Islamic narrative. Suspiciously, he didn't really rush to address this point and instead chose radio silence. I wonder why he did that. What possible reason could Sifi have for not addressing the point about Muhammad having sex with a nine-year-old bride before he was even permitted to by the Quran? There are many reasons I could think of why Sifi wouldn't want to address that point. I'm hoping perhaps this will be a little bit of a prompt. We can remind Sifi that he has yet to address his point. Because I don't know about you, but I'm incredibly interested on how he defends these actions. But in this time, Sifi has published a new video where he attacks some of the Christians. And as usual, I don't think it's particularly great. In fact, I think that Sifi has made a lot of very basic errors and mistakes. And to be frank, I would have hoped he would have known better at this point. But I'm always here to educate Sifi on the things he's missed out and point to him to scholarly works that refute his points very quickly and very easily. Let's watch the first clip. Here we go. God Almighty does not have sons or daughters. Christians claim God has a son who is the second person of the Trinity, meaning he is also God. So according to them, Jesus is the son of God and he is also God, which leads to believing that Jesus is the son of himself. Yeah. You see, Sifi, you end up with these conclusions because you don't actually understand what Christians believe when they talk about God. You apply your Islamic belief to the Christian belief and just assume that you can do this with no questions asked. If you let Christians explain their concept of God to you, then you'll actually understand the answers. When Christians say that there is God, we mean the creator, the savior, the redeemer. This is the question of what God is his essence, his being. But the other question about God is who is God? Now the Islamic perspective is God is Allah. He is one person, just like in creation. The issue here that we see is that Christians don't share that same belief. Christians believe that although there is one God in the what sense, there is one essence, one being in God, the question of who God is, is answered by Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Three relations or three persons within the Trinity. Because Christians say that who God is, is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we conclude that God is tripersonal. One of the reasons we believe this is because, like Muslims, we agree that God is not like his creation. And hence, he is not one being in one person like creation. He is beyond creation. So when you say God is one person, you're actually going against your own Quran by saying that God is like his creation. And there's no way in the Quran where he says explicitly that he is only one person. These are the very basic concepts of Christianity. And if you aren't aware of these yet, you need to go back and study Sifi. So to answer your question directly, there is no issue with saying that Jesus is God and Jesus is the son of God, because you've talked about two distinct things. When you say Jesus is God, we're referring to his nature. Jesus in his divine nature is God. That is the what Jesus is. Jesus is the son of God is the who Jesus is. The particular relation we're describing in the Godhead. And because we make this distinction, there is no contradiction. And we are not saying that somehow Jesus is one person and also another person. Let's move on to the next part where Sifi quotes the dictionary. Okay. This belief doesn't make any sense at all and leads to absurdities. According to Collins Dictionary, son has three definitions. Someone's son is their male child. A man, especially a famous man, can be described as a son of the place he comes from. Some people use son as a form of address when they are showing kindness or affection to a boy or a man who is younger than them. So which of these definitions relates to Jesus being called the son of God? Is Jesus the biological actual son of God or is he just a metaphorical son of God? And if he's not a biological son, and I know Christians don't believe he's a biological son of God, then Jesus is only a metaphorical son of God. Therefore, he's not an actual son of God and the Trinity is just a delusion. Are you okay, Sifi? You just quoted a, a dictionary, the Collins Dictionary, to define the term son to then apply that to the Christian theological understanding. Okay, let me let me break down how bad and how poor that is. Let, let, let's really think about this, right? Imagine if I, a Christian, were to do something like this. 
Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. I am going to prove that Islam is false. Here we go. I'm going to talk about the attributes of Allah. And I'm going to talk about his shin. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's look at the definition of the word shin. Here we go. Let's get Colin's dictionary up. When Muslims describe Allah's shin in... By the way, Sifi, this is found in the Quran in Surah 68, Ayah 42. We have the following options presented to us. Shin as a noun can refer to the front part of the lower leg. Interesting. It can refer to the front edge of the tibia. Also interesting. Or in a British context, and of course I am British, it can also be a cut of beef, the lower foreleg. Now I know that Muslims don't believe that Allah's shin is a cut of beef, particularly the lower foreleg. But rather, I think that based on the infallible words of the Collins Dictionary, the Muslims must be referring to Allah's shin as the front part of his lower leg, meaning that Allah has a actual physical lower leg, or the front edge of his tibia. Evidently, these are absurd, and I have therefore refuted Islam. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here all weekend, uh, if you ever... <laughs> Seriously though, Sifi, you understand the ridiculousness of this. When Muslims talk about the shin of Allah, they mean something very particular in a very distinct theological context. They aren't talking about normal everyday usage of the word shin, or whatever it might be in Arabic. Likewise, when Christians say that the word of God is the sun, we don't mean a biological sun or a sun in the other senses that you found on the Collins Dictionary because the Collins Dictionary is for laymen. It is for normal, everyday language that people speak in, Sifi. It would have been more appropriate for you, Sifi, to get a Greek interlinear and look at a common passage where Jesus is called the Son of God, like the classic John 3.16, and look at the particular Greek word, monogonase, and see what that means in a concordance, like this. Notice how this is not the definitions you showed from the Collins Dictionary, because funny enough, the Collins Dictionary is not a theological concordance. Moving forward. So the assumption there is that Allah or God can only have a son through sexual intercourse. Christians for some reason don't understand this simple concept of God being one and unique. A son must be of the same nature of his father. Human beings for example have sons who are also human beings. God having a son who has the same nature as him is an impossibility because it goes against the attribute of God Almighty being one. According to Tafsir Sadi, how could he have a son when he has no wife? That is, how could Allah have a son when he is the Almighty God who has no wife and has no need of anything that he has created? Whilst they are all in need of him in all situations, a son must inevitably be of the same nature as his father. But Allah is the creator of all things and nothing that he has created is like Allah in any way whatsoever. Ah uh, yes, the every son must inherently be of the same nature as their father. That's interesting because didn't you just say a moment ago you accept that Christians don't believe that the son is used in a biological sense? So if we say that Jesus is the son, but we don't mean that in the biological sense, why are you <laughs> appealing to a tafsir that seems to assume that Christians do mean that and that it's applicable to use an analogy to biological sex. We know that in biology, when we look at nature, we can see that a son will be of the same nature as their father. That's a biological sense though, and we don't mean it in that sense, Sifi. <sighs> you can't say one thing, Sifi, and then go against it in the very next section of your video. You need to think about the things that you're saying. And even then, this is a byproduct of nature. This is the cosmos that God designed. This isn't something that is then applicable to God himself. So if we took out the biological aspect of it and just applied it to things coming from other things, you wouldn't say something like anything God creates must be of the same nature as God, right? Obviously not. The analogy is even more flawed because it assumes that God created the Son. Or in this sense, the Father created the Son, which we reject because we believe that the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are eternal. There was never a period in which any of these did not exist. They are uncreated. A bit like... The Quran, if that helps you think of things a bit differently. Let's move forward. So someone pointed out to you that there is valid hadith that talks about how there are certain parts of the Quran that have been lost. Your response is, Allah causes it to be lost. Okay, prove it. Show me any authentic hadith where those specific chapters or parts of the Quran that he claimed have been lost. Muhammad said that this is intentional. I will gladly wait, but I have a funny feeling I'm going to be waiting for a long, long time. Keep in mind, I actually think this is a weak form of the argument. There's a much stronger one, which is just using modern scholarship. Sean W. Anthony, for example, an expert on early Quranic sources, 
He himself has written a paper where he explains that in the earliest times of the Sahaba, in the times of Muhammad, Muhammad's companions used to recite an additional two surahs at the mosque in their prayers. And he has a whole paper going through this, which I'll link in the description so Sifi, you can look into it and realise that Actually, the Quran has not been perfectly preserved in any sense of the word at all. And finally, just before I finish, Muslims like Sifi like to pretend that Tawheed is the ultimate purest form of oneness. Well, this is ironic because the Quran in Surah 42, Ayah 11, makes it very clear that they are not to associate Allah with anything, and yet they associate him with oneness, which is clearly a known aspect of creation. So in effect, they associate Allah with creation. If they were being more theologically accurate, they wouldn't say Allah is one in the same sense that we know oneness, but they would say it's in some way that is not known and is only known by Allah. Keep in mind as well, Sifi, that according to the Sunni aspect of Islam, Allah has actual body parts. He has actual compositional elements to him, of which seem to be separate based off the functions that are derived and understood through Hadith and Sirah and the Quran. For example, he has two right hands, he also hears, he also sees, and the early Muslims understood this not in a metaphorical way, but in a very literal way. Allah has eyes, Allah has a shin, as we mentioned before, the big chunk of meat. And these are all not the same as God's essence, they are actually compositional, they are parts of Allah, because Allah has a significant amount of parts. This is very foreign to the Jewish or the Christian God. It's also worth mentioning that you keep talking about partners and things, well, Allah has partners with lots of stuff. When Allah created Isa, he did so with a partner, Jibril. He could have just said B, and there Isa is, but he didn't. Instead, he went through this long process involving Angel Jibril coming down as a well-proportioned man and blowing into her According to your Quran and Tafsir Ibn Kathir, that's what happened. That doesn't sound like Allah doesn't have partners. It sounds like he has a particularly interesting partner in this sort of thing. Same with Issa himself. Issa creates clay birds and breathes life into them. Huh, I would have ascribed creation only to God, but it seems for some reason in the Quran, Allah lets Jesus do it too. And Issa, I guess, is only doing it through Allah. But wait, if Allah wanted to create clay birds, wouldn't he just create them and say B and it is? Nope, he went through the whole process of going through Issa and using Issa as part of the creation process. That kind of sounds like a partner to me. <laughs> If I was involved in creating things, like actual matter out of nothing, something that only God can do, and I do it by using God, I've kind of made God my own partner. And this is why the Islamic concept of God is plagued with issues, it's plagued with problems. It is fundamentally irrational at the core. It doesn't have a strong backing in logic, in philosophy, in sound reasoning. Instead, it is largely just the thoughts of people who had previously pagan backgrounds, who borrowed stories from other areas, who came up with these ideas that expressed things they thought were probably pretty cool at the time, but didn't understand how to make a coercive narrative out of these things. In other words, yeah, they got a lot of stuff wrong about God. God is one in, in an absolute sense. There is nothing you can associate with him, but he also has like lots of different parts that enter creation, but he's also nothing like creation because the Quran says so. But we also say he's one, just like a lot of things in creation. <laughs> you understand how you start to get kind of funny when you do this, right? Like, it gets it gets progressively worse because Sifi, uh, I have a funny feeling, is not gonna have any answers to this, but I will wait, Sifi, and I'll be patient. Still waiting for a response in the last video about Aisha, the nine-year-old child bride that Muhammad had sex with before he had actually got permission from Allah through the Quran to do so. And I'm now going to wait for you to respond to this. Lord willing, Sifi, you realize the errors you're making here and you start to think, hey, maybe I got some stuff wrong. Maybe the Quran is actually just the work of man. God bless you though. God bless you all. Come to Jesus Christ if you have not already. And I will see you in the next video. Take care.